Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Advice from Your Besties. Woo! Each week, we have questions, you have questions, and we'll give you answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are your thoughts on male yoga teachers? Hot take, I'm afraid of them. Really? Yeah, I'm afraid of them. Why? Um, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. No pun intended. We're hearing some fun. Some yeah. Sirens in the background. <laughs> Woo! Ooh, those are food special sound effects. No copyright on those. Okay, you so you saw the Bikram thing years back. Bikram was uh, charged with sexual assault on a number of victims, hundreds. Then um, there's also this in a, a number of other, but um, it's called Breath of Fire. It's a documentary on netflix similar similar story mm -hmm. and um and then i was thinking about all the male yoga teachers i know and they kind of give you the ick mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what's the thing that what's going on there um okay i have a couple experiences with male yoga teachers yeah one when i first started doing yoga a lot when i was in college there was this super hot yoga teacher yeah. he was like this black guy football player muscular mm. oh my god mm -hmm. I, would, I would do yoga uh -huh. <laughs> no, those are he would come and like gently rotate yeah i'd open i was like okay i don't mind it i don't mind it but also okay this is when it gets weird because let's say a gentle rotation but when they like caress your body to move it you you need a little like firm touch in there so it's not so gross because i feel like the male yoga teachers Really, it's just an excuse to get handsy with a lot of ladies. Use, yes. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what? I'm just adjusting you. Here, let me pull your butt back into me while you're in downward facing and dog. I do like, and the problem is I like that move. <laughs> I like it when you use my hip bones as like handles. Yeah. And you grab the bones and get it under the psoas. I'm a big fan of the psoas altogether. <laughs> so if you can do that, I'm down. But that's what the problem is because... I am very relaxed. My body is in the exact right position for you to take me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of like, should we do that? <laughs> <laughs> now would be a good time to do that. I often think that. And it's funny because like when I'm having sex, there are times where I'm like, do you want to role play yoga teacher? And I don't think people understand why this is a good game to play. It's a great game to play. If you're not incorporating the yoga teacher to the yoga student in your sex play, you are missing out. I can agree with that. Okay. I don't want to hear about it. It's disgusting. Whatever you're about to say. Are you the no. yoga teacher or the student? No, I'm the student. Yeah, of course. How yeah. else do you get the yeah. ass? How else do you get my ass in the air? Like, I'm the teacher. Very good. Very good, Austin. Yes. <laughs> And he's not in the pegging, so it's never going to work. <laughs> also, he has a downward facing dog. It could be like up to like my neck. <laughs> like, is that neck? <laughs> you could ride him. <laughs> like a sheep dog. I have wanted to play yoga teacher so bad. And just like you're in the downward dog and then they just come and they're like, no, relax. I told you back in the day, they used to, the prompt they would say is, put your ass in the air. Like you've got a, a flashlight shining out of your butt and just <laughs> shine your light. <laughs> Don't understand that. I'm like, what? No, I, it's, it's God is my witness at Cherry Hills room one. It was a very crowded thing. And that's what they did. They used to say, shine your light. Just imagine a flashlight in your ass and just shine it. <laughs> so it's like, it was wrong then. And you're like, and you know what? It really kind of starts to go awry is when you're a downward facing dog and they like rub their hand from the base of your spine to the back of oh, your yeah. head and they're like pushing you down. <laughs> And then you wonder why these yoga instructors are like tying women up. It's just the next progression step from like, it's horrible. Yeah. If you wonder why we like having our face smothered, it's because of the yoga teachers. They taught us. They taught us. That's good posture to get strangled. Yeah. You don't want to breathe. You don't want to be able to breathe. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. So um, now, even before I saw the most recent documentary about male yoga instructors taking advantage, um, 
I hate that they planted the seed. Not that they planted a seed, but I hate that that innocence was broken for me. Because now I don't want any man coming near me in class. I actually wish sometimes, as much as I want other, I want men to be there, so you can have a robust experience instead of just a feminine yoga. It's just some. I don't know. I just yoga dudes, <laughs> dudes in yoga. <laughs> I want the dudes in yoga actually to just be like my husband. You don't do, you don't go all the time. You roll up in like your Lululemon designated yoga outfit. Yeah, you kind of know what you're doing, but not really. But it's nice that you're there just for the company. Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of man I want to see in class. Your husband? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to see my husband in class. <laughs> husband in class. That's great. So we can hold hands during shavasana. Oh, do you do that? Yeah, we do. Oh, that's kind of sweet. I'm glad I didn't know that. <laughs> I would never have known if I hadn't asked. Yeah, now you know. Um, I don't mind guys in the class. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm just talking about like the instructors. Because like what has motivated you to do that? I mean, maybe, but. I... And like, why do you have such a love for wearing leggings? That's another question for the males. And like, why can you not, can you teach without touching? No, they can't help themselves. Because ladies teach us without touching us. That's because they've been taught not to. I think all male, I think all yoga teachers right now, yoga instructors are being taught to not touch as much, but you know, rules don't apply to men. So those do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. um, Speaking of men, how about football players? Do you think that football players are throwing the game because they can be betting on the outcome? I think it's a very complicated, I think it's a, I don't I feel like it's not one. There's so much money behind the game mm -hmm. and behind and the game period. And there's so much money behind online betting mm -hmm. that um, it can't be as simple as, hey, don't score that next touchdown. Okay. Like, <laughs> I, or don't throw, like, it's got to be something even more minute because everyone is watching everyone. Mm -hmm. I think that if play actually throwing games or messing with the score so much i think that it would have been cracked down on by now i'm sure that there's a handful of players that really do try to skew it a little bit but, but what would it take for them to do that i mean you have to be making so much more money you're already making so much money as a football player and like why would you want to like sacrifice that yeah and you also get performance bonuses so if you're going to get a touchdown every game, that's a bonus. Or like however you play your defense, interceptions, yards, gain. You get bonuses based on performance. I actually don't think it's the player that's throwing the game. I think it's the people making the lines in Vegas that are setting the lines. And then maybe they're the ones dictating the actual outcome. And then because... Like, so hey, are have... they in cahoots with the refs to make some calls so that certain things happen? Or does everyone perform according to the lines that were made in Vegas? But then how is that benefiting the football players? I don't think it's about the football players. I think it's about it's about money. But I feel like they'd have to be making some money on the back end in order to um, go along with the. Oh, sure. They're going to get compensated. Yeah. But I don't feel like it's one person is throwing it. I mean, they do say the NFL is scripted. And why are they saying that? Because there's just so many unbelievable things that happen. And that's what I'm talking about. But I feel like that's the name of the game. It's not. I mean. Like what? What's one unbelievable thing that happened? Uh, oh, the Chiefs. Two weeks in a row, they squeaked by that's what on saying. two games that they should have lost. And they happened to block a field goal on the last one. And then I think they also won by field goal on the one before that. But I think the NFL is scripting that the Chiefs need to be undefeated and go to the Super Bowl. That's what I'm saying. So I think that there's maybe not the players, but maybe they're talking to the coaches, to the refs, and saying, like, hey, we really, really need this storyline to keep But going. why do we need that storyline? I don't know, because it's con – well, for the Chiefs, it's controversial because everyone's over them winning all the time. So it's causing more um, engagement through the NFL and also listening – more like fodder for the podcast for the shows so i think you know entertainment value mm -hmm. people love to hate on the winners so that's a good that's why they hate us so with. much Ugh, everyone hates us so much uh -huh, they hate us so hard <laughs> <laughs> 
Because we're too much. Oh, my God. In the best way possible. I know. Mm-hmm. That's what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Your husband doesn't have a problem hanging with us. Oh, no. He likes it. I know. He <laughs> likes it a lot. He yeah. is a real man that can take it. We're not too much. And if we're too much for you, you are not our person. You're a pussy. Pussy. <laughs> um, anything else? All right, real quick. How do you feel about uh, holiday advent calendars? Ooh, I always wanted one, but I haven't gotten one yet because I'm not quite sure which one to splurge on because I'm watching the unveilings on TikTok. The unboxings. The unboxings. And some of them look good, but then I find out it's a company in Europe and it already sold out oh, yeah, a no, week no. ago. Whatever you're looking at is sold out. Yeah. And that's really disappointing because now you're showing me all the stuff I can't get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I've always been leery and maybe it was just my conditioning and the way I was brought up to be... I'm always leery of samples. I'm like, oh, why are you giving me this sample lipstick? It's probably trash. It's not the right color. Why are you giving me this sample perfume? It's probably not good. Why am I going to like it? Oh, interesting. No. I don't like samples. I don't trust them as far as I can throw them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that about me? No, I didn't. Like, if you give me a name, I'm not going to like any of it. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I learned it from my mom, oddly enough. Or maybe I just learned it as a kid because I was like, no. Anything you give me that's like a free sample, like the lipstick's always the wrong color. It's a shade off or something. <laughs> so the sampling marketing totally did not work on you. Because mm-hmm. the whole point of the sample is that you're going to end up buying the full oh, size. I run for the hills. I don't want oh, a sample. Wow. You can keep your sample because it's probably just trash anyway. Oh, I we love look, a sample. We take samples. We used to take samples as if it like, I don't remember what that sentence was going to be, but no, like them. We will. No, you keep them because we don't want to turn around and have to throw it away because it's going to be trash. Oh, wow. You didn't know that about me, did you? No. No, I don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> I used to get this makeup box that would have like five free, or I don't know, five samples a month, $5, something like that. And I think they were good samples. But then this is the thing with the sample. It's a really good sample. So I don't want to use it all because then I have to go buy the full size one. So I use it very sparingly. And then you, I don't even use the sample. So now it's a piece of junk anyways because it's expired. I told you. You'll end up throwing it away anyway. <laughs> I know. Does makeup know. expire? Yeah. Unlike medication or... Sp- they all expire. Does medication really? You were created in a lab in the first place. It just starts to lose its efficacy. Yep. <laughs> word of the day (laughs) and then spices tend to have flavor loss you just regrind it in your hand some more to freshen it up yeah or you cook it in olive oil on the pan that's sad (laughs) (laughs) as Lindsay would say that's sad sad uh okay well i don't think my medication goes bad well, you take it on a regular basis before it expires. Yeah, good God. Uh-huh. Thank God. Where would we be if I didn't? I know. Not here. Woo. Woo. All right. Well, for this episode with Yesi, and what are your thoughts on Advent calendars? What do you think about male yoga teachers? And is the NFL scripted? Let us know. Drop it in the comments. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. The whole time where you think about AC.